Well, thank you so much for the, the warm introduction. And I'm very, very happy to be here. Of course, I'm very excited to be here. We've done some amazing things. So my company is BioViva, and it's true. We're trying to translate medicine to you. And we're going to talk about why we would do that. But first, we're going to talk about you. These are very excited people, and I hope that you feel this excited today. You're, you're probably quite tired out, uh, but you've learned a lot today, and you've learned a lot of things that then I don't have to go over, so that's even better for me. So I definitely feel like this. Okay, so as humans, we want to live, we want to thrive. Survival is built into us. It's what we do. We look for ways before we cross the street to make sure that we survive, uh, to maximize our chance of survival. We wash our hands and we brush our teeth to minimize our risk of infection. But what we do to survive and protect those we love changes with every generation. As a matter of fact, it changes every decade and even faster now. And we're on the precipice of the most promising technology that will extend human lifespan and health and that's gene therapy. So, in 2015, I took two gene therapies. I did it to test whether today's science could profoundly change the disease paradigm, to see if we could create a healthier world. So why would I take two gene therapies when medicine today would consider me healthy? I did it because I believe I'm dying of a disease. And so are you. That disease is biological aging. Simply put, aging is the driving factor, the underlying cellular degeneration that drives the diseases that you know of. Alzheimer's, heart disease, cancer, COPD. We approach all these diseases separately, but they all have a singular cause of cellular aging. They're a symptom of this cause. Disease takes away our dignity, our freedom, and our independence. Time is our most precious, powerful asset. The time to run and jump, to build bold ideas. In my case, to take gene therapies and see what happens. Spend time with the people that you love. Think and remember with clarity. But aging and disease takes all of these things away from us. I know. In 2013, my son was diagnosed with diabetes type 1. We've heard this story several times today. You know, this is, this is a reoccurrent, treatable disease. But a nine-year-old boy, my son, was thrown into a world of blood checks and insulin injections. It's changed our lives. But while I was at the hospital, I found out that he was considered lucky. Children like him are considered lucky because they have treatable diseases, and other children at that hospital were not lucky. So like any parent, I asked, what type of therapeutics were available for these kids? And I was told that there were not very many new medical options. But wait, I had read the headlines. I had read that cancer had been cured in mice many times over, that we could differentiate stem cells and create islet and beta cells to treat people with diabetes, that cures for AIDS and dementia were right on the horizon, and that we were growing new organs from stem cells for patients who needed them most. What was holding back these innovations? Why were people dying waiting for a cure? This question sent me on the first quest of my life. It took me 42 years to find something that got me up off the couch. It's never too late. Passion changed my life, and it set me on a journey to find out what was happening in the world. So I found out that over 150,000 people die every day. And of those 150,000, 110,000 die from the diseases of aging alone. Hundreds of millions of people suffer daily with chronic disease. Take your prescription pills, meditate, exercise, aging and disease catches up either way. We've got to try something new and there's more urgency than ever. 
we're living in an aging world. By the year 2020, there will be more people over the age of 65 than under the age of 5. That means more people need medical care, but we have fewer people to fund that care. It's quite honestly a recipe for disaster. Innovation will slow to a halt. I just read two days ago that Alzheimer's in the United States will knock Medicare completely out in the next 10 years. Just one disease. Each one of these diseases of aging right now is about a trillion dollar problem worldwide every year. But through my um, introduction to leading researchers in the field, I found out that cell and gene therapies were revolutionizing medicine. When the human genome was run in 2003, we had the first insight to what genes define us as a species, and now we're learning which genes define our lifespan and ultimately our health. This advanced gene therapy years ahead of what it would have been before. So gene therapy, again, gives us the ability to replace or block faulty genes or upregulate ones that have beneficial consequences to the body. Right now, we're on the verge of curing eight rare diseases. And as a matter of fact, I believe that two of these have passed cures in the EU. Lipoprotein lipase deficiency and SCID. This is, this is uh, such a pace. This is such a strength. We'd like to replicate this, sex, this success in more complex disease, like the aging diseases. So in the 1970s, we found out that life, lifespan is truly malleable. And now we have extended the lifespan of worms 11 times, flies by six, fish by four, and specific strains of mice by five times through gene modulations alone. But what about humans? <coughs> we now know 10 hallmarks that are driving aging. We'll talk about a couple of these here. One is telomere attrition. As your cells divide, your telomeres get shorter. They become damaged. When you're conceived, you're conceived at about 15,000 base pairs. When you're born, you have about 10,000 base pairs. And you die at approximately 5,000 base pairs. It's basically a limit on cellular division. It drives other things like cellular senescence. These are old cells that no longer divide. And they basically throw off toxic proteins to their neighbors and cause inflammation. Epigenetic alterations, we've talked about that today, genes turning on and making cells behave differently over time, loss of proteostasis, or cells no longer make proper proteins, they can't recycle them and use them. So there are a few more up here and you can see those. The, the fantastic thing about the discovery of these hallmarks of aging, which is what these are called, is that companies are now able to develop therapeutics that not only slow disease, of aging, but they actually reverse it. The problem is, is that getting these therapies to people is slow, cumbersome, and risk adverse. It simply takes too long for most treatments to re reach patients who actually need them now. So in response to that, in 2015, we created a company called BioViva. The company was made to be a platform for promising biotech companies to launch their products, to bridge the gap between research and the clinic. Upon launching the company, we put together two of the most promising gene therapies that had a synergistic quality, and I took them. I felt like it was the most ethical thing to do, that quite honestly, companies should take their own medicine. So now we're going to talk about what therapies I took and what the results were. The first one was telomere repair. I think that I mentioned this quite soundly in when describing the hallmarks of aging. This is one of the strongest hallmarks of aging and actually reversing telomere attrition has the most effect on the other hallmarks of aging. 
So it helps uh, with stem cell exhaustion. It creates cells that can divide. Uh, it helps with cellular senescence. It helps these cells go through apoptosis. It also helps with mitochondrial dysfunction, which I do not believe is up here, but it's a very powerful uh, effect. And then the genomic instability and the deregulated nutrient sensing. With this gene therapy, uh, mice have been uh, treated twice, uh, gene knockout mice, and they have reversed their aging. And it has actually extended the lifespan of mice by about 25%. The second gene therapy is a myostatin inhibitor, so it, it increases the, your muscle mass. So this is where we're definitely going to start to blur the line between enhancement and pre preventative medicine, and we're a company that's very happy to have that conversation. It helps uh, with the deregulated nutrient sensing, so it may be a great treatment for things like diabetes type 2. So essentially this is designed to uh, keep you from getting muscle loss and bone loss uh, over the years and keep you more active and um, essentially not having to buy a house that doesn't have stairs and, and playing tennis and, and keeping you uh, vigorous longer. So what did we see? What happened to me? Uh, we saw a 600 base pair um, increase in my telomeres in my white blood cells, so in my T lymphocytes. We saw increased muscle mass and a decrease in intramuscular fat, which was fantastic. That was, that was actually really cool, and that felt really good, too. That, I didn't notice that. Uh, as far as my blood biomarkers go, we saw a six-fold reduction in C-reactive protein. So that's one of the best biomarkers for inflammation and would be a red flag for something like cancer. So that was a really good sign. Uh, we saw a 25% reduction in fasting uh, blood glucose levels, which is a sign that I have a better insulin um, sensitivity and increased metabolism. And we saw a reduction in triglyceride levels of 50%, meaning potentially better heart health. Immunizations and antibiotics revolutionized medicine in the 20th century. Infant mortality went down and lifespans increased. Gene and cell therapies will be our next big breakthrough. They will be administered like vaccines, keeping you from getting sick to begin with. BioViva is starting now. We're opening up this year clinics and we're opening up to research. I spend a lot of my time actually traveling to other countries and talking to regulators and government persons and <laughs> doing all sorts of things that I really never uh, pictured for my life, but um, I, again, I love what I do, and we're looking forward to treating our first patients, uh, obviously patients in the highest need. We'll be opening up to safety trials this year in gene therapy, and uh, we couldn't be more proud. <coughs> We have to decide what kind of world we want to live in. Do we want to live in a world where people are consigned to suffering and loss? Or do we want to live in a world in which we embrace life and take care of one another? We have the ability now to start to design our evolution instead of waiting for nature to decide our fate. It's time for an upgrade. What healthcare needs is better tools. BioViva is delivering on those tools. So even though I have a few extra copies of genes in my cells, I'm still just like you. <laughs> I want to live, I want to thrive. Perhaps you'll be the next prototype for the future of health. The payoff is boundless human potential. Together we can eradicate disease for both young and old. I hope that you stand with us for a change. Have courage. Thank you.